So today we're going to talk about periodic functions and probably the most important two we're going to start with is uh, the sine and cosine function. But let's just explore a general periodic function to begin with. So here's your definition of a periodic function. All right. Function that repeats itself after a specific period of time is called a periodic function. So before you have got three, actually four periodic functions, this guy repeats itself as you can see and we call the time in which it takes to repeat itself the period. So in this case we see our period is 2 pi because it goes up, down, and up and then starts repeating that pattern again in 2 pi time. All right? Now if you look at this kind of like tooth looking figure, it goes down, up, and then starts repeating itself down again in four units of time. So we call that its period. This function, this kind of trapezoidal looking thing, goes up, down, and up once again, and it does that in six units, so that's its period. And this little, again, like jigsaw, goes up, down, up, down, and cuts in two periods, or in two units of time, so that's its period. So what we're going to do now is look at a really famous periodic function of the sine function. And when we graph the sine function, notice we're graphing the sine of theta is equal to f of x. This is typically our y. Theta is going to act like our x. So this theta is our input, y is our output. I've got a unit circle over here for the reason that what we're going to do initially is we're going to graph these from 0 to 360 in degrees. And later we'll go into radians. But here's what I'm going to do. We've got some special things happening at axes. We've got nice clean points to graph. So I'm going to label my horizontal axis in terms of degree measurements and my vertical axis in terms of values. Now we know that the sine of a point anywhere in this unit circle is the y value. Just coincidentally, f of x and y happen to be the same in this case. So what I'm going to do at each of these points, I am going to give the sine value. Now, at 0 degrees, which is right here, I'm looking for my y value on that circle, and it happens to be 0. I'll plot that point. At 90 degrees, I'm looking for my y value, which happens to be a value of 1. So at 90, I'm going to graph the point 90 degrees over and 1 up. At 180 degrees, I look for my y value. That's 0. Put a point right there. At 270 degrees, I look for the y value, and that happens to be negative 1. And at 360 degrees, I'm back to zero. So that's zero. If I were to go one more set and go 90 more degrees, that would be at 450 degrees. You'd notice that I get back up to one. So here's my function. It's not a straight line. You just have to trust me on that. It's curvy linear. And you'll notice that for the sine graph, it's actually periodic. And the period of the sine graph is equal to either 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Because we know these are coterminal, and the radian value is the same as the degree value. All right. Let's move on. We're now going to graph the cosine function. We're going to do it the same way. We're going to go all the way around the circle. Start at 0 degrees, go in intervals of 90, because those give me nice, clean points to graph. And we'll finish. Let's just go to 450 again for kicks. And this time, 
on my y-axis, I'm going to have values of cosine. Now the cosine relative to any point in the unit circle is given by our x value. So at zero degrees, I'm going to look for my x value, which happens to be 1. And I'm going to graph that point. At 90 degrees, I'm looking for my x value, which is 0. At 180 degrees, I'm looking for my x value, which is negative 1. 270, x value is 0. 360, x value is 1. And if I were to go 90 more degrees, I'd be at 450. 90 and 450 are coterminal. And I end up with 0 again. So if you look at this graph, very similar to our sine graph, but different at the same time because they go up and down at different points in time. And notice I'm getting these graphs from the x and y values off my unit circle. Let's take a look at a special case of graphing. I want to graph y equals sine of x from negative pi over 2. And if it helps you for now, that's negative 90 degrees to pi over 2. 90 degrees. So I'm going to start at negative 90 degrees, and negative 90 degrees is back 90 here. So I want to graph my sine value, which represents the y value of this graph. Well, the y value of that graph is negative 1. I'll put a dot here. At 0 degrees, moving forward, I have a y value of 0. And remember, we're talking about y because we're talking about sines. And then at 90 degrees, I have a y value of 1. So if I graph this, it's not a straight line, it's that curved figure, but it's only a small portion of that curved figure. I don't necessarily see a period here because it never repeats itself. So I couldn't tell what the period of this graph is right now. I'd have to see a more extended version to identify it. But we already talked about sine having a period of 360 or 2 pi. Let's look at another example. We're going to graph the cosine of theta from 7 pi to 9 pi. Now, you look at this graph right here, and you don't see 7 pi or 9 pi. You see 0 through 360. But we know that 0 is the same as 2 pi. And if I went around another 2 pi, it would be at 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi, etc., etc. At 180 degrees, we have pi. If I go 2 more pi around from pi, I'm at 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, and 7 pi. And hey, what do you know? That's where we're starting. So really, pi is the same as 7 pi. And in this case, we're looking for our x value. So what is my x value at 7 pi? It happens to be a negative 1. So I'm going to put that here. Now, there are some measurements in between each of these pi's, like our pi over 2 measures. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill those in. So this is 7 and 1 half pi, and then 8 and 1 half pi. So, if this is 7 pi and I move in a counterclockwise fashion, talking about positive angles, 7.5 pi would be here and I'm looking for an x value, which happens to be 0. At 8 pi, 8 pi is the same as 2 pi, it's coterminal, and its x value is 1. 8.5 pi would be my next axis point, so that is 0. And 9 pi gets us back to that 7 pi, it's coterminal. So that's also negative 1. And graphing that, I get my cosine graph once again, like so. So it's basically finding out where you are on this unit circle 
and figuring out either your X and Y coordinates and then graphing them. And this pattern will continue over and over and over again. Now, in these next examples, we want to determine if it's a sine or a cosine graph. And really what you need to do is figure out what's happening at a specific axis point. So let's look at this first example. All right. What I try to look at is where is the function equal to 1 or where is it equal to 0. All right. And I know that at negative 2 pi, I have a value of 1. All right. So I'm going to look at my circle. And I know that this is 0 or 2 pi. Or if I were to go, instead of in a counterclockwise fashion, a clockwise fashion, this would also be negative 2 pi. And I know the value at negative 2 pi for x and y is 1 and 0. So I look here and say, well, I'm looking for a value of 1. My value of 1 happens to correspond to my x value. I know the sine values talk about y, and the cosine values talk about x. So this must then be a cosine graph. And now I go to the second equation, and I see, well, I have 4 pi. But we just talked about Every time you go around a full rotation, you're moving 2 pi. So one time around is 2 pi, two times around is 4 pi. And I notice at 4 pi, I have a value of 0. So 4 pi, which of these values is 0? It happens to be my y value. And we know y corresponds to our sine value. So this graph would have to be a sine graph. That pretty much does it for today. Here are your questions to answer, and we'll see you tomorrow.